green light 120 watt HPS standardized technique. Surgery and narration by Dr. Kevin Zorn. This educational video will highlight the technical aspects of surgery with the second generation 120 watt laser. This system was first introduced in 2006 and is widely used in many centers across the world. Fortunately, the 180 watt XPS system has been available since last year in 2011 in most North American centers. Nevertheless, the purpose of this video will highlight the technical aspects of the use with this particular laser system. First note, when compared to the newest generation laser fibers, the fiber itself is actually has a quartz cap compared to the metal cap which is much more resistant to thermal damage. Nevertheless, we begin our incision in this bilobar prostate with incision at the 5 o'clock position of the bladder neck and bring this back as a slow rotational method to the varimontanum. Laser setting here is 80 watts. What is important is to take down this groove, whether it be a very close contact methodology or at a slower sweeping speed here, we simply bring back with quick rotations to incise and not allow the tissues to stick. Our goal is to get down to the surgical capsule and this is usually identifiable first at the thinnest point at the bladder neck. This can be demarcated clearly by the color differentiation from a clear white and there's the orifice being pointed out by the laser compared to the adenoma which is the light tan brown tissue laterally. Once this depth is uh, identified, we then fire the laser on a tangential path along the adenoma at the junction to the capsule. As such, the energy is being focused more on the adenoma. Once we get to this appropriate layer, we will come across certain stones that are along the capsule. This is another identifying marker to know that we have reached the right plane. Care must be taken by the surgeon so as not to injure the fiber by energizing on the stone or keeping stuck in one area. Compared to the newest system which actually has a thermal reading so as to protect the fiber from devitrifying or fracturing, the surgeon must be much more precautious with this fiber system. Here the mojo fiber, as it is termed, which has a 400 kilojoule lifespan is continued along the junction of the adenoma and the capsule along that 5 o'clock position. Note that I rarely fire at 6 o'clock, therefore immediately beneath the laser fiber, as I am unable to judge the depth and the vaporization along that angle. So as such, my initial incisions or holding of the fiber is at a 5 o'clock position and energy is shot out tangential so as to allow visual inspection along all aspects of the surgery. So as such, my reference is 5 o'clock and either, like in this instance, rotate from 5 o'clock to 4 or 3 o'clock or from 5 to 6. However, the standard is off on a tangent so as to allow the surgeon visual recognition throughout all aspects. And here we can see a nice capsule. There's some remaining tissue fibers that we are simply going to break off and this will complete the widening and the lateralization of that five o'clock groove and we take it back to the varimontanum and the apex of the prostate. Care must be made in this instance where there is already some tissue sticking to the fiber either to rub it off on a, at the bladder neck or to pull up the fiber and use a small white wet cloth to remove any tissue from sticking on the cap. Here we continue along at the three o'clock area where there is a junction between the capsule and the adenoma. The working space between the cap laser 
and the tissue should be approximately 1 to 2 millimeters. The reference will be the fiber cap, which is 1.8 millimeters in diameter. At this point, the energy setting has been brought up to 120 watts, so as to allow for more tissue removal. At every pass, we return back to the bladder neck, gauge the junction between the tissue, adenoma, and the capsule, and simply follow that line to allow that adenoma to be freed, particularly laterally. The surgeon should also be aware that the capsule is thinnest and not to spend too much time vaporizing on the capsule for risk of perforation. What is nice about this laser energy it is that it is specific to red containing tissue with oxyhemoglobin. The surgical capsule is quite fibrous and therefore quite resistant to energy absorption and therefore disruption. Here we can see we are simply walking our way along that surgical capsule that was first identified at 5 o'clock, taking it back from the bladder neck to the apex and vera montanum. Caution should be made when treating near that apex and anterior space, particularly for novice surgeons, so as not to pull back too quickly and potentially injure the sphincter. Here we're simply following that 6 o'clock capsule that's been already identified from the 5 o'clock widened groove and simply following that along that same principle along a known structure boundary which in this case is the surgical capsule. Here we see the vera montanum, the ejaculatory duct which marks the beginning of the prostate and treating anterior to this will simply be all the prostate and leave the sphincter uninjured and obviate the potential for any incontinence in these patients. Here you can see we're quite in close contact with the tissue. It is quite fibrous and this potentially could injure the capsule. So th simply through experience and through uh, doing many of these cases, uh, I sometimes get quite close to the tissue. When in doing so, I rotate the cap quite quickly and also will bring the power setting down to 80 watts. One of the issues that a lot of novice surgeons note when using this HPS system is that the final capsule can sometimes look a little fluffy, that there's some remaining tissues. This owes to the fact that the diameter of the laser is quite thin. It's approximately 50% smaller than the newest generation XPS system. And as such, the sweeping methodology, if someone were to ro rotate quite quickly, could lead to this fluffy tissue. Here we're coming to near the end of the procedure. We're simply looking in, validating that both orifices are within their normal position. We check the vera montanum and stop the water flow, insert the catheter. Here we see a cystoscopic imaging of the prosthetic fossa six months after surgery, demonstrating normal epithelialization and complete tissue removal. As such, there is a lot of tissue that will slough off and this is what this cystoscopic imaging is demonstrating. This concludes our educational video on the HPS second generation green light laser for BPH. Thank you for your attention.